what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel super duper late once again my buddy nilo came over and i was helping him with his transmission slight rebuild and he just took off and i decided to not waste the rest of my day so i decided let's work on my brother's blue wagon in the previous video you guys saw we worked on my brother's car we saw fred's car and we also saw herb's element now the wagon is parked back over there for the time being i parked it there because i need to pull the injectors out of it to set them out to get clean to know the condition of it you guys know that we are only able to turn that car on with brake cleaner in the intake manifold so i'm wondering if the injectors aren't like firing on the initial startup i don't really know how injectors work in that sense but we gotta figure out the injector setup with that car to step into the next phase with it. The few previous videos of my brother's car, we were lowering it back down from the lift kit that was on it. And in today's video, we're, we're gonna reuse all that lift kit on this car. This car is front wheel drive and you're probably wondering, why did I take the lift kit out of the all wheel drive car and putting it over into a front wheel drive car. My brother's car is a K-series supercharged all wheel drive setup. My brother wants to utilize that car like on the track and just a fun overall street car, kind of like what my wagon is for me, my fun little street car. So you can't really do that with the lifted stuff. It's unstable when you go really fast on the big tire. So uh, we decided that we're just gonna drop it back down and just make it a fun street car. But because he drives his car everywhere, like work, fishing, camping, he decided to just have this car lifted up and take this to do all of those fun activities. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video, guys. I don't wanna blabber on too much. Click jack would be really, really nice right now. So I got the front on jack stands. I think I'm just gonna focus on the front first and I'll get to the back whenever I get to it. So we have my brother's suspension for the front pulled off. Now you're wondering why I took the camera kits off as well too. Honestly, I didn't even know this car had camera kits, but it does and they're completely shot. Not any better than the one that we're gonna put on. So with putting that camera kit on this car, it should put the alignment somewhat to where that car was at and my alignment guy doesn't really have to touch the camber arms because it is kind of complicated with this car. So these are 9093 Honda Accord front shocks with Civic top hats. The Honda Accord is a three bolt top hat and the Civic is two obviously for these cars. With this stock suspension which I got from the junkyard, this lifts the front of the wagon. I don't remember how much like one and a half or two over stock and because these are Honda Accord we have to use the big fork is why I took those off right there. So I'm going to go ahead and fight this suspension to get it into the car and one thing I'm also remembering is I want to say the spindle arm itself hits the spring so I think I think I might have to modify it. I think this is what's touching the spring right here So 
So I did the driver's side first just to figure out a technique that's going to be efficient for me. It wasn't much of a struggle. It took probably 15 minutes to put this whole entire suspension on. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the passenger side with you and show you guys how I went about uh, putting this very tall suspension in here. First thing I'm going to throw up is the camber arm. What I found easier for me is to leave the spindle off the upper control arm for now. Next thing I'm going to throw in is the shock itself. Next up is going to be the fork. And the goal with the fork is to get it in the shock first. So we can cut out some slack. I'm going to put the 14 on to keep the fork in place with the shock so it doesn't fall off when I'm trying to adjust it in place. We're not tightening it all the way yet because I want the whole entire suspension to be compressed so that this gap um, is fully closed before I secure it. I'm going to go ahead and do the lower 17 mil for the fork to the LCA. This one's a little tricky because the fork is further down than the LCA so I got to like press down on the LCA to get the holes to line up. And I also got to move the spindle around to get the axle away from the fork so it doesn't bind. Seventeen mil nut going on for now. I'm not going to tie it down until we preload everything. So now that I have the seventeen on the bottom on, I'm going to go ahead and use my jack to bring the spindle up so we can line up the upper control arm. Upper control arm on. I'm go ahead and install the castle nut. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cotter pin on. Very important. I'm gonna put the little cover on for the castle nut. So now that we have that secured, the suspension is compressed. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the fork 17 and the fork 14. And there you have it. So, digging these wheels out of the backyard, or at least three of them, because the fourth one was in my brother's car. It was tiring, but we got it all out. We're gonna be rocking these wheels on my brother's car instead of my DR20s with my 27 uh, Winter Forces. Those are mine anyways, and the tires are shot because he had terrible alignment. But I'm gonna be taking those big tires off to put regular tires on there so I can rock them on one of my cars or something. But we're gonna be rocking his 14 inch wheels with the BF Goodrich all terrain tires. These are like practically brand new. It was on his car for about a year and he didn't even drive it. And then he switched over to my wheels and used those for when we drove to camping and you know to Reno and the snow and all that. So these are practically brand new. It sat for a couple of years. You can see the dust on it pretty thick compared to this one being out in the element. This size wheel and tire combo is not going to require me to modify his side skirt and his, uh, what, do you, uh, what is this, fender lining. On the brown car with my wheels, I had to cut the side skirt and fold in a lot of the tabs so he can do a full lock U-turn. Um, but I'm trying to avoid all of this so these are going to do the job everything is done here left and right side on the front half of the car and i already figured out which ones are fronts which ones are rears so these two are front they're not directional let's get to mounted If you look at the car at this angle, right? It looks like the car is on jack stands. <laughs> is this how you guys squat? Is it? Is this? Is this how you do it? <laughs> Yo, this is hilarious. Wow. 
So I just threw some air in the tires. It says max PSI 65. So I put it about, I don't know, 58 or so. And uh, we're ready to turn this car around. But I'm not gonna work on the rear tonight because my brother told me yesterday that one of the camber bolts is it's not stripped it broke off the tack welds so it's just bouncing around in there and i want more time to have to like locate find it wherever it lands in the back of the tub cut it out secure remove you know the deal with trying to get a nut in the back of a bolt especially for the cam arm so i want more time to do all that tomorrow i am going to turn the car around though just to kind of get it ready for myself and yeah i guess I just want to show you guys this squat action before we jack the car up and finish up the rear. So check that out. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Back in the garage guys and I already took off the rear suspension from the wagon and I am struggling with the camber bolt on the opposite side that my brother told me about. This one right here is uh, just spinning in circle and the nut on the back side broke off the spot weld and that's why it's not coming out because the back side is still spinning so i went and drilled out two small little holes to peek through and i can't figure out where the bolt lands now the one that's towards the front of the car is right here because i did it on my brother's brown wagon but the back one towards the rear of the car i don't know where it is there's a bunch of like plates here i'm wondering if it's like hiding behind it and i'm really just trying to find a solution to remove that bolt to either drill a hole and tack it on this side or remove this bolt to put a light through to figure out where it lands on the inside so i'm trying to take it with this real quick and find a solution because really i'm just trying to knock this out so i have the head of the bolt shaved off right and i got a vice grip holding that stud into place i'm trying to push it in so i can open up a gap to get this light through the gap to see if i can see it on the other side so these little holes here i don't know if you guys can see it slightly down there it's literally under another sheet of metal so I'm trying to figure out Trying to figure out how to do this. This bolt was driven in cricket. And typically how this breaks is once it is bounded up with a strip, it breaks this off the chassis. It's only spot welded right there. Three points, one, two, and three. So I made a terrible calculation based off the light and my eyeball angle i thought the bolt was sitting here so i cut this little door open and to find out it's not there it's actually over here so i had to cut another trap door to access that bolt that came out of here and now i got two holes to patch back up but nonetheless we got it out i'm gonna go ahead and uh line up the other camera arm put the bolt in and then tack the bolt in the place so I just stitch welded this whole entire uh, trap door back not fully just in case we need to open it up for whatever reason later down the road the nut down there is already welded so the 14 millimeter is uh, nice and secured you can see the camber kit is already on there right I'll seal this up when I get seam sealer right now I don't have any so I'm just gonna let it be Right now you're probably wondering why I threw this camera kit on and took off that one. The camera kit that I'm throwing on this car is the one that came off the brown car which is adjusted for the ride height with the big wheels. So when it goes into alignment, it shouldn't be far off. Granted it is the same chassis. But the reason also is because this side camber arm is only held by one bolt. So taking it off and repairing it and then just throwing on the ones that was already adjusted for the lift just makes just makes it a little bit simpler so now i can put the rear suspension on but i'm going to do the same like i did yesterday with the fronts i'm going to do one side first figure out which is the easiest way to do it the only difference between the blue car and the brown car is that this car has a stock trailing arm bushing where the brown car has energy suspension where the wishbone can move freely 
Okay, passenger side, um, I don't know why I overthought this, but this was pretty easy to do. No more than 15 minutes with um, a lot of binding, but with the help of the 1.5 ton jack, it went pretty smoothly. Uh, I didn't really remove the trailing arm bushings because, like I said, everything just kind of lined up, right? So, I did flip the LCA. The LCA, this is the passenger side. I put the driver's side over here. Reason for that is because if you flip the LCAs around, you get an extra lift. I don't know, I don't remember how much of a lift, but you do get an extra um, half inch plus or so. So if you look, right, this bottom one is for the shock and it is the lowest one of the three, but if you flip it around, that that's a big jump i want to say at least it's one and a half but regardless flipping the lca with the rear shock and the front shock it makes the rear taller than the front i remember not flipping the lca and the back was sagging more than the front what we're using here is 9093 integra db1 four-door okay this is the four-door stock rear shock i also got this from the junkyard because we were obviously keeping it very budgeted and it's been on the car since i want to say this has been on the car since 2015 16 and it has been working fine my brother drives it around it's not super stiff it still have a little bounce to it but not bad granted the car is lifted but stock integra rear shocks and flipped lca so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the driver's side i'm gonna set you guys up really quickly make sure that's threaded this is a very tall shock so i'm using the jack to hold it up beforehand I can go ahead and drop the jack, shock is in place. Now I'm gonna swing the LCA over to bolt it up to the shock itself. It's loosely sitting on there. Now I'm gonna jack up the LCA to compress the shock. I'm also pushing a jack forward to keep the LCA in line with the trailing arm because it is moving backward kind of. You can see the car is getting off the jack stand because we are loaded on the suspension, but I need it to be fully maxed out. So that way when I put the trailing arm on, the bolt will go straight through and catch threads on the other side. That caught threads. Now we do the camber arm. I am gonna zap it all in now because it is loaded. That's it. Honestly, I think installing the driver's side was less than 10 minutes, but we got it on and the car is obviously not high enough for the wheels to go on. So got to kind of max out my jack to put these monster tires on. Guys, the car looks a lot taller than the brown one. Uh, don't remember the back being that freaking lifted, but holy cow. I'd rather have it rake because he's gonna take this car camping, fishing, and pretty much off-road. My brother is gonna pack this car down with all his fishing equipment, his camping gears and stuff, so I'd rather have it sag and be somewhat even than to have it sagging lower than the front. So this ride height compared to the front, I'm good with that. So 
it's weird it's weird to see this car lifted and on the wheels that were on the brown car initially and it's just weird to see the brown car lowered after six years being lifted so this is definitely going to be a new sight for me and i'm pretty stoked that uh everything went as smooth today we definitely beat the daylight there <laughs> wow aside from all the rattles i can hear in the back it drives pretty smooth this car has a b20 vtec in it so it kind of helps with moving these big wheels opposed to the brown car which has um the k series but even before the k series it was a single cam all-wheel drive right four-wheel drive sorry but um this engine definitely makes driving this car easy on the big tires right here looks good it is so funny to see guys like for real <laughs> wow look at that go ahead and grab my phone real quick take some photos another good thing is that i don't feel no crazy axle bindage or anything i did a full u-turn on the circle loop there and it doesn't seem to be rubbing anything so that's freaking awesome so i think that's pretty much going to be it for this video guys i'm going to wrap it up here and uh yeah anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video again suspension mods was listed throughout this entire video so if you guys are interested in lifting your civic wagon or i think it even applies to the other chassis as well as long as the suspension style is the same right so if you guys enjoyed today's video be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you guys want to stick around for some more work on my brother's brown car tomorrow because i have the brake lines the rotors the pads we're going to give the brown car tomorrow a break upgrade so if you guys want to stick around and see that be sure to hit the subscribe button but with that being said thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace